was the first concert you went to? Kiss, 1979. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones? Yeah. Uh, Rolling, Rolling Stones tattoo you and uh, Kansas and Hart at uh, you in a Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. Give me, but, oh, sorry. Yeah. Me, me and him, I think our first concerts was the same one. Yeah. Wow. Rolling Stones. Wow. First big. Yeah, I felt Contra, the dome man. shake, man. Freaked me out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Stone, another brought me there. Tattoo you, ninety-eight thousand people sold out. Yeah, general admission. It, it, it was amazing, so man. It is. When I went, I was the same kiss in '79. I was in sixth grade, and when I stood in front of the low end of speakers, it felt like when Gene hit a cord that my head was bending in half. I, it was the heaviest thing I'd ever, ever, ever encountered. I, it changed my life, obviously. <laughs> I'd play sick. I don't feel good, Mom. All right, honey, stay home from school, and I'd be in, like, fifth or sixth grade, and I'd have kiss alive one cranked to like the loudest possible <laughs> and I'd have kiss makeup on and a tennis racket and oh, yeah. jumping around in front of my mirror in my bathroom and Wade my stepfather <laughs> busted me and I gotta think now that he must have been laughing to himself you know but you know, at the time, I was in trouble. I thought you were sick today. Uh, you better get in the bed, wash your face, and turn that damn music off. You know. But I still did it. Yeah. That's great. Okay, so now, all right, go forward a little bit more. So now you're, you're uh, you've been loving music. It's a part of your life. And now you're, you're about to... Uh, you start playing, you start doing your stuff, and you start getting your, your first band, your first heavy band. Put yourself back in that tape, this time frame. What's going on in your world? Well, I had a whole bunch of people tell me that the only way to make it was to make it in the bar scenes because that's where all the big wigs eventually hung out and uh, I was in a band that was like we would do everything from the song Iron Maiden to a lot of Juice Priest covers to some uh, in my opinion half-hearted original attempts and uh, I slowly, but perhaps it was rapid, uh, I rapidly, uh, as most people tell me, grew tired of that band quite quickly. And I was only in the band a year. And when you're playing the bar circuit and you're from Louisiana, it's absolutely easy to cross paths with bands from Dallas, Houston, Shreveport, because everybody played the same bars. And I guess uh, Pantera had heard about me through the grapevine. I would definitely heard about them. And uh, from there, the, the history began. Was there a scene going on? Were, like, were there other bands that you guys were playing with at the time that kind of made it like a bit of a scene or? Is it really? There was an underground scene that was unstoppable and fucking, uh... New Orleans had a great 
a great underground scene, you know, and fucking every chance I had, which was slim to none, because I played every weekend. And when I joined Pantera, it was excellent, because I would say, look, I'm taking a couple weeks off, you know, at certain points, and I got my opportunity, especially I would time it with an underground show that was happening that uh, weekend or whatever and the shows were packed with 600 kids and everything like and disorder and graveyard you know, rodeo graveyard rodeo shelf, DRI uh, you know, agnostic man, front corrosion with the local the yeah, you, yeah, bands. the local bands. You know. Well, all the local bands would support some of the stuff that would come through, like Suicidal and stuff like that. You know, I, mean, right, I was in a band called a Shell Shock. You know? I was in a punk band called Shell Shock, and we opened for Suicidal Tendencies, and that was cool. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> things like that, you know. Now, Phillips Band was really popular, and uh, they were always fun to go see because they would always play the cool, cool covers, you know. And, and, uh, and they had some pretty good originals, too. I, I dug good. some of the originals they had. Uh, I a thought that I, want, I wanted way more out of fucking music and way more out of the heavier side of everything. And there were many, many times where... Uh, It very well could have been the end of my trek with Panther a lot earlier. There were a lot of bands that wanted me to sing with them, you know, that were clearly established bands in the underground. And I won't even bring that up, but uh, it was very inviting, I'll say that. Uh, it was very, very... Uh, intriguing and it made me feel very good and uh, yeah I, I it was basically a, this is what we're going to do or else and basically all we did was really take into our arms the anti-image thing and wrote a, a lot of songs that no matter what, I'll just get this out and this should be the end of the Pantera segment. Uh, in my personal view, the very first Pantera uh, record was not our true, uh, well, our very first two records. We did not really find ourselves, in my opinion, until Vulgar Display of Power. And to me, that's always the true first Pantera record. I got a piss, man. No, no problem. See y'all. I'll ask him a couple more. Okay.